Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about leveling up your server security with some next-gen tools. We are diving into a powerful combo. Cloudflare Zero Trust for Secure Tunnel, Google Identity to Manage User Accounts, Google Cloud for OAuth Authorization and short lived Certificates for SSH Access. That's right. Ditch the old school SSH keys and say goodbye to constant key management headaches. I will show you how to set up a secure web-based SSH terminal where access is granted through OAuth logins and protected by certificates that expire after each session. This approach offers a ton of benefits from improved security to streamline user experience from single sign-on. So, whether you are a seasoned system administrator or just looking to tighten up a server access, this video got you covered. So, buckle up and let's get started. Let's start with a demo of what we are trying to achieve today. I have my Google Chrome browser. Let's sign in. I will provide philip at linuxcloudhacks.ovh email. Mine the custom domain name. It's not gmail.com. Here I will provide the password. For increased security, you could easily enforce multi-factor authentication with YubiKey hardware token or Google Authenticator app. If we click on the circle in the far right corner, it will show us that a secure session has been created. Now, I will go to Node 1 SSH, Linux Cloud Hacks URL, where my web based SSH terminal is located. Look at that. I mean, I did not have to provide any other credentials, passwords, keys, or anything else. How is that possible? And is that secure? Let me answer that question. I will show you how it works from a high level perspective, and then we'll set it up step by step. We'll be using only free tier offering for all the components. This type of setup is ideal for home lab, hobby, startup, or even small business. We have three major components in our setup. Cloudflare network, our server running the SSH service, and Google as our identity provider. First, we need to install the Cloudflare daemon on our server. This daemon connects to the Cloudflare network and provisions a tunnel. Additionally, it creates a public host name to route traffic to Nodes 1 SSH service. To protect this traffic, we'll set up a zero trust access policy. When someone tries to access our application URL, the system will check if they have the necessary cookie with the access token. If they don't, they will be redirected to our identity provider, that's Google, for authentication. Google will present a consent screen to the user, informing them that an application is trying to access their data and asking for their permission. After the user consents, the authentication phase begins. If the authentication is successful, the user is redirected back to Cloudflare, this time with an authorization code. Cloudflare acting as the client will then request an access token from Google, including the authorization token in the request. Google will issue the access token, allowing Cloudflare to obtain information about the user. Finally, Cloudflare will validate uh, whether the user email address has permissions to use the tunnel. There are a few prerequisites. You need to register with Cloudflare application service, free plan, to get access to their DNS server. You need to buy a domain and delegate the DNS for that domain to Cloudflare. Here's my video showing how to do it. You also need to register with Cloudflare Zero Trust free tier. You will find my video tutorial on that as well. Okay, we have a domain managed by Cloudflare DNS and are registered with Cloudflare Zero Trust service. This is our starting point. Now we need to create a Cloudflare tunnel to securely connect our server with its SSH console exposed to the Cloudflare network. I will go to Zero Trust Networks and select Add a Tunnel. Let's make sure Cloudflare D is selected and click Next. I will name my tunnel Node 1 as that's the server we'll be accessing and click Save Tunnel. We'll be installing a so-called connector. It's just an application that runs on the server in the background and among other things, establishes a secure tunnel to Cloudflare's network. 
I will select Debian and ARM64 as that's what we are using. Here's an installation script that will download Cloud4D, install it and configure the Cloud4D daemon as a system service. This enables Cloud4D to run continuously in the background and start automatically on system boot, ensuring that the secure tunnel is always active without requiring manual intervention each time the system restarts. Let's copy the script, go to our server and run it. Mind that the server does not need to have a public IP. It just needs internet access. We'll be connecting to the server via Cloudflare infrastructure. Let's check the status of our service. Okay, it's running. If I scroll down, we'll discover our connector is running. Status is connected. Basically, our server is hooked up to Cloudflare network. Let's click Next. It's time to bind a public host name to the service running behind the tunnel. Traffic going to node 1, dash SSH, Linux Cloud Hacks OVH, should be routed to the service type SSH located at localhost port 22. Basically, this section defines the public endpoint hosted by Cloudflare and accessible by our clients, and this section defines what is behind the tunnel on our server. I will preserve the configuration by clicking Save Tunnel. All looks good. The tunnel status is healthy. If we go back to main menu, select my domain and check the DNS, we'll see a new CNAME for node 1SSH has been created. It points to our tunnel. Next thing we need to do is protect our service with zero trust policies. I will go back to the zero trust menu and select access and click add an application. The type of application we want to add is self-hosted, as it's an application that we manage located in our own infrastructure that uses Cloudflare's authoritative DNS. I will name the application node1-ssh. Then let's specify the URL for the application. That's the endpoint that we'll use to access the application from the internet. I will set it to node1-ssh and pick Linux Cloud Hacks domain. This entry needs to match what we've defined as our tunnel public endpoint. I will disable the application launcher as we won't be using it today. At the moment, the only identity provider is the built-in one-time pin. We'll change that later. Let's click Next. Here we need to define the policy of who is allowed to access our application. I will name the policy SSH policy. The action is allow. In the rules section, I will put my email. In other words, only people having this email are authorized to reach the service. Let's click Next. On the last page, down below, I will enable browser rendering for SSH. This will render our SSH terminal within the web browser. Finally, let's click Add Application. Let's double check everything. Our service is reachable via a tunnel that routes this public hostname to a service behind the tunnel. The service is SSH on localhost port 22 of our node 1. Our application URL matches the public hostname in the tunnel. There's a zero trust policy allowing only for a specific email address. Identity provider is one time pin sent via email. Now it's time to test our setup. I have my browser open in private mode. Let's put our application URL. Okay, I got redirected to the authentication page. Here I will put my email address defined in the policy and click send me a code. One time pin that's valid only for 10 minutes. Let's copy it from the email and paste it here. Then let's click sign in. My not zero trust would not only authenticate the user, that is verify user identity using a one-time pin, but also perform authorization, that is determine if this particular user should be allowed to access the application. Okay, we are presented with a login screen. Here we provide the SSH server credentials. Let's put Philip, then enter the password, bam. We are locked in. Those credentials are controlled on the Node 1 server. Those are the exact same credentials that you would use to access the server via SSH. 
I could log in to any other user on node 1, even root, if that was allowed in the SSHD configuration. If you just need a quick way to access your home lab server via SSH and you don't mind entering one time pin and later username and password, then you are done. One time pin sent via email is not the most convenient and secure way to authenticate. Luckily, Cloudflare supports various identity providers, including Microsoft, Facebook, Okta, Google, and others. Identity Provider is a service that creates, maintains, and manages identity information for users. It is responsible for authentication, that is verifying the user identity by checking their credentials. It's also responsible for identity management, that is creating or deleting user accounts. It enables single sign-on, so you log in only once and gain access to multiple applications and services without needing to re-authenticate for each one. We'll go with free tier of Google's Cloud Identity. It allows us to provision up to 50 users. Let's go to the sign up page. As the business name, I will put Linux Cloud Hacks. Then we specify the number of employees and the region. Then let's put contact information. Next, we need to provide our domain name. This is a mandatory step. You need to own a domain. I will use linuxcloudhacks.ovh. Let's confirm our choice. Here we need to provide the admin account and password. I will name my user admin and provide the password and then agree and continue and acknowledge the message. Then we need to prove that we own the domain. To do that, let's click protect. How it's usually done is that you are asked to add a record to a DNS. Then Google can query for that record and if it finds it, it means that you are the owner. As only the owner of a domain could modify the DNS. I will click I'm ready to protect my domain. It did detect that the domain DNS is Cloudflare. It's asking us to sign into Cloudflare. Let's click sign in to verify. Because we are already logged into Cloudflare console, it did immediately ask us for authorization to add in TXT record. Let's click authorized. Now Google is waiting for the record to be propagated. In the meantime, we can go to our Cloudflare DNS console. Here's the record that was added. Okay, our domain is validated. Next step is to create a regular user that will be used to access the SSH web console. Let's click create. We are redirected to the user's panel of our cloud identity console. We can see only the admin user. To create a regular user, let's select add new user. I will provide first name, last name, and click add new user. Okay, here's the username and password of our newly created user. We can copy the password or reset it later from the console. If we look at the user list, we'll see the admin user as well as the regular user. From now on, you can log into admin.google.com to access the Cloud Identity Console where you can manage users in your domain. To integrate Google as an identity provider with Cloudflare Zero Trust, we need to do some setup in Google Cloud Platform. If you don't have a GCP project set, then go to Google Cloud Console under console.cloud.google.com, agree the terms of service. It created our organization and granted the organization admin role to our admin user. Then let's sign up by clicking start free. One more approval. Let's provide our payment information. Payment will be then verified if it works correctly. Don't worry, you won't be charged. Uh, we'll be using a free tier. Few more questions to answer and we have our first Google Cloud Platform project set. To add Google as the identity provider to Cloudflare, let's go to Cloudflare Zero Trust menu, uh, then settings. Next, the authentication tab. At the moment, the only authentication method is the one-time pin. Let's click add new and select Google. For Cloudflare acting as a client to authenticate itself to Google's authorization servers, we need to provide credentials. Client ID, they call it app ID here, identifies the application and client secret acts like a password for the application. To get those details, let's go to the GCP console. First step is to enable the Identity and Access Management API. In GCP, not all APIs and services are enabled by default. You only enable them if needed. To enable Access Management API, 
I will go to APIs and Services and then click Enable APIs and Services. Let's search for Identity and Access Management, then uh, select Identity and Access Management API and click Enable. This is one of the most basic APIs, so you may have it already enabled. Next step is to configure the so-called OAuth consent screen. This screen is presented to the user during the authorization process. It is crucial for the user authentication and authorization as it informs the user about the application requests to access their resources and ask for their explicit consent. You must have seen that already. Something like, this application is requesting access to your Google account to view the email address and so on. Let's go to APIs and Services and select OAuth Consent Screen. Then select External and click Next. I will name the application Cloudflare. For the user support email, let's select the admin user. For the developer contact, let's provide our email address. Then let's click Save and Continue. Then let's select Scopes. Those are specific levels of access or permissions that a client application is requesting from an authorization server. In our case, we want Cloudflare to have access to the primary Google account email. Let's click Add or Remove Scopes and select that from the list. Then click Save and Continue. We don't want any test users, so let's proceed further. Lastly, go back to the dashboard. Our consent screen is ready. It's time to create credentials so that Cloudflare can access Google's API. To do that, I will click credentials, create credentials, and then OAuth client ID as we'll be using open authorization protocol. Application type is web application. I will put Cloudflare as the client name. Then we need to provide two URIs. First one is the origin that requests will be coming from. This ensures that only requests from specific trusted web origins are allowed. Here you should put your zero trust team name followed by cloudthoraccess.com. Second one is the authorization redirect URI. That's a specific URL registered with the authorization server to which users are redirected after completing the authorization process. Let's put the same URL followed by CDN CGI access callback. Finally, let's click create. We are presented with OAuth client ID and client secret. I will copy the client ID and paste it in the app ID field. Then copy the client secret and paste it in the client secret field. Finally, let's save the configuration. To test the OAuth process, I will click test. It's asking me to log in via Google. I'm already authenticated, so I will just select my admin account. Then provide the consent to share the name, email, language preference, and profile picture with Cloudflare. It works. Here's the name and email we got from Google that will be used to check against our rules. We have Google Identity added as one of our identity provider in Cloudflare Zero Trust. Now it's time to reconfigure our application to use Google Provider. First thing first, let's go to our Identity Management Console, that is admin.google.com, select Directory, then Users, and reset the password for our user. I will untick the box so I won't be asked to change the password upon first login and make it something easy to remember. Then let's go to Zero Trust Panel, then Access. I will reconfigure our SSH application. In the Authentication tab, we need to deselect one-time PIN, leaving only Google as the identity provider. As Google will be the only provider available, let's tick this box to skip identity provider selection. Let's save the configuration. We also need to adjust the policy. To do that, I will click Edit, then Configure the policy. The email we'll be looking for is philip at linuxcloudhacks.ovh. Let's save the policy. Basically, after we authenticate with Google, our client will get the email of the authenticated user. Here in the Policy section, we tell Cloudflare who to allow. It's time to test the process. Let me copy our application URL. I will open a new private window and paste the link. We got immediately redirected to Google's sign-in page. Let's provide the email of the user that we did create in Google Identity, then provide the password that we recently reset. Now let's accept the consent by clicking continue. Bam, we are in. We got redirected back to our application. In this step, we provide the username and password for SSH access. We got to our SSH shell. 
mind that this time we've used Google as the identity provider. Authentication with Google Identity works. However, we still need to provide username and password to log into the server. Luckily, it's possible to delegate the authentication of our SSH users to Cloudflare. As users are already authenticated, we can use that information. How it works is Cloudflare will generate a short-lived certificate for the session and provide it to Cloudflare daemon on the server. These certificates will be then validated on the SSH server using Cloudflare's CA public key. To set it up, let's go to Zero Trust, Access, then Service Authentication and SSH. I will select our application and click Generate Certificate. Let's copy the public key of our certificate authority. SSH will then use that key to validate short-lived user certificates. Then I will go to Node 1 and store the CA public key in the etc SSH CA pub file. Next thing to do is open SSH deconfiguration file, uncomment public key authentication, and add trusted user CA keys option by specifying the path to the file with our CA public key. To verify that user certificates are valid, the SSH daemon will check them against Cloudflare CA public key since Cloudflare signs the certificates. Let's save the configuration and restart SSH service. Important thing to mention is that the username on the server needs to match the username in the cloud identity. Let's test our solution. I will go to the URL pointing to the Node 1 SSH web console. As expected, we got redirected to Google's login page. Let's provide the username and password and click Next. Works, we are in. Thanks for joining me today on the journey to secure server access with a web-based SSH terminal protected by OAuth and short-lived certificates, all backed by Cloudflare. I hope you found this guide useful and feel more confident in securing your server access. If you have any questions or need further clarification, don't hesitate to drop a comment below. I will try to help out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update from the channel. I have plenty more exciting content coming up on Linux networking, web security and cloud services. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.